hard goods this? So we've got the Samsung, we've got the CJ79, which is a 34 inch ultra wide 2K monitor. Really excited to get this one open. We'll do a bit of an unboxing and we'll start setting it up. We got this one for about 1,050 Australian dollars from Harvey Norman, which is an electrical store here in Australia. They had a special on, I think their regular price was about $1,200 and uh, we got it for a small discount during a sale. We'll get this one out of the box and get it up on the table and we'll show you exactly what comes with the package. You can see straight away that it's actually a really neat looking screen. It's got a really small bezel around the edge and it does look really, really nice and modern. This one has a 1500R curve, probably one of the larger curves that I've seen. The only one that was a little bit bigger on another screen that we were looking at was the 49 inch curved monitor. Unfortunately, that one was only 1080p, so we opted for this one with the QLED and the 2K. The whole monitor is really clean and tidy. No excess wires or anything anywhere. And I'll show you a little bit later that the cable management with the screen is really, really good too. We'll get it all unpacked and we'll get all the plastic off. Everybody loves a good unboxing and peeling the plastic off a brand new product like this. It's quite satisfying. Everything that's included in the package is on the table now, as you can see. We'll go through some of the items. First up is the wall mount. It does come with a wall mount. The wall mount does stick out a little bit. Uh, we are sort of looking at using it. We're not sure exactly if we'll need it yet, but we'll see how we go. The stand is quite large at the base, and I'll give you some measurements on that base as well later in the video. I'll just quickly give you the part number of the wall mount. So here's the part number, just in case anyone needs it. I'll put it in the description of the video below as well, just in case you need that. Secondly, we've got the power pack. You can see the power pack is quite large and bulky. It's probably one of the bigger power packs that I've seen for a screen. We've ended up double-sided taping that under the desk and up and out of the way. So it didn't really matter that it was a little bit big, but uh, you know, a smaller power pack would be nice, I guess. This next little package is the backing plate where all the cables plug in on the back of the screen. Clips in nicely and hides all the cables from view. Not that you really need to worry about that behind the screen, but it is a nice little accessory. And something that's nice to see in this day and age is cables that are included. We'll get this little accessory box opened and uh, we'll show you the cables that come with it. The biggest draw card for this one was that it is a Thunderbolt 3 capable screen. So it does plug straight into the MacBook and that is a really massive help and it does simplify things a lot connecting it to the MacBook. We've got our HDMI cable and we've got our power cable. So we've got our Thunderbolt 3 cable all here. You can see everything's nice and neat and white and does blend in depending on your color scheme as well. We'll flip the screen around and have a look at the back and we'll see what plugs are included. You can see that the screen is really adjustable. I'll go into that a little bit more later and I'll give you some measurements of uh, total height and uh, also when it's compressed as well and some of the tilt features. We'll get the power cord unwrapped and plug it into the power board and then plug that power cord into the computer as well. You can see that the cables, once they are all plugged into that notch in the back of the screen, it does get covered up as well. We're gonna connect the Thunderbolt 3 cable straight to the MacBook. This actually delivers power through it as well. So it technically is the only cable that you need connecting your MacBook to anything at all. Although we do run a wired connection for the ethernet to USB-C cable as well. 
and we'll pop the back cover back on once all those cables are all plugged in and you can see that the side of that stand arm does clip off and then all the cables run down the arm of the stand which is uh, out the way and you can't see anything from the front which is great. And then you can back the screen up to the wall and hide those cables as best you can and it actually comes up looking really really nice. We'll skip forward a little bit here, you can see the screen is all set up on our desk. We've got some LED lighting as well, which we're still finishing off, but you get the idea. The screen does look really simplistic and really nice, all set up. So here you can see the curvature on the screen. As I said before, it's a 1500R curve and it's a 34 inch wide screen. It is 100 hertz and 2K and the aspect ratio is 21.9. Width-wise, the screen is 81 centimeters edge to edge. Height-wise, from the desk all the way extended, you're looking at about 55 centimeters tall. And if we squash the screen down all the way down, it's about 45 centimeters tall. So depth-wise, the screen is 26 centimeters from the wall to the screen. The base itself is about 30 centimeters deep. So I'll show you here exactly how the screen can be adjusted. It can go all the way up, all the way down a fair bit. I think there's about 10 centimeters of adjustment and uh, it does tilt forward and backwards as well. You can see around the back there, you can still see some cables, but we've done our best to hide them out the way. Squashed up against the wall. It's a really good view of the curvature of the screen as well. So don't mind our LED strips on the back of the screen that have come unstuck already. We're gonna find a better way of sticking them to the screen, but I can show you the plugs on the back of the screen there. You can see that we've got the black powered Thunderbolt 3 cable, and it does have 85 watts of power, which has been more than enough to keep our MacBook Pro powered, even when gaming. We've got another USB-C charging dock there. We've got a USB-A, we've got the HDMI, and then we've got the power cord. So all of these cables when plugged in, which we've had them all plugged in as well in this area, uh, that cover does go on and cover them all up. And then those cables are really hidden out of the way. There is also a USB-A port just above this little indent here as well. Um, we use this one to power our LEDs and also one of our lights. So I'll go through some of the menu options here. I'll just flick through them. I won't explain them too much. I'll have a link below to the instruction manual if you need it. You can see here it's fairly adjustable. It's got some HDMI options, some eye saver modes, some gaming modes as well. This screen does have AMD FreeSync, which is really good for gaming. So it does match those frame rates and you eliminate some of those screen tears open up some videos as well. So the biggest thing to note with this screen, I guess that we weren't expecting as much um, as maybe what it shows is the black bars either side. So a majority of this stuff you're gonna watch um, in 4K or 2K is not gonna fill the whole screen. Um, so you can see in this video here, we're watching a YouTube video in 2K. Oh, I've got it set in 4K, but it's gonna max out at 2K like the screen does. And uh, yeah, you can see the black bars either side, so it does not fill the complete screen. But in saying that, when we switch over to our workflow and do some editing for videos and so forth, it does use that whole entire screen. And I can't stress how much better that makes the workflow. You can see down the bottom there that we've got the full timeline of the video there. I think in this particular instance, we've got about 15 minutes uh, of timeline there. And it just allows you to see a huge section of screen. We've got the big preview on the right. We've got all our videos on the left and then the long timeline, which is much, much better than having to drag along the timeline and see everything as you go. So that's really, really helpful with this screen. Color wise, it's, it's pretty good. Um, there's probably a lot better out there. This one we use for editing and for gaming as well. And it's been really good for what we've needed. So we use our screen as a second screen for our MacBook Pro. Again, this was the main reason we chose this particular screen above some of the other options that were out there at the time. This one was a little bit more expensive, but the fact that it's got that Thunderbolt 3 connectivity straight to the MacBook Pro, it just makes things so easy. I'll show you here how easy and simple it is to swap between screens. I can just drag the window from the main screen 
over to the MacBook Pro. So when we're streaming, for instance, I can have our gameplay up on the main screen and I can drag our Twitch uh, control center or OBS control center down onto the MacBook Pro and have that going on the MacBook Pro as a second screen. And it just makes things really, really easy. Lastly, I'll just go through some of the options that the MacBook shows once the screen is plugged in through Thunderbolt 3. You can see you've got a lot of different options for setting up the second screen or as a main screen or as a mirrored screen. Um, it also shows you some of the technical specifications that the MacBook is getting from the screen. For example, that it is 100 hertz, you can change that as you can see as well. And you can change the orientation of the screens, which is great. I'll put a link below uh, to this screen on Amazon as well. And I'll also show you where we bought it from Harvey Norman. So you can have a look and I'll also put a link to the instruction manual as well. So nothing technical for this video, just a quick unboxing and show you the screen that we've got. We're quite enjoying the screen at the moment. We're actually thinking about getting another one down the track as well. Um, we'll let you know once we do that and uh, what we think of that as well. Cheers.